Richard, you and I have similar jobs in systems of community and technical colleges that have both uh, proven to be very hospitable to open education resources. What is it about Virginia that, that makes it work at the system level? I think, I think you know, uh, for Virginia, uh, part of it is kind of our overall strategic plan. Um, our, our earlier plan, we have a new plan, our earlier plan focused on student success, affordability, access. Uh, and, and there was a, a number of resources and infrastructure already kind of set up to achieve those goals and, and by attaching kind of OER to those existing resources we were able to move things forward I think pretty effectively. But I think more important than that may have been our Chancellor, uh, Chancellor Glenn Dubois, who was himself a community college student. He was raised by a single mother um, and he tells the story about uh, his uh, enrolling in community college um, and being very excited about it and uh, you know they had to save up their money for for uh, for college and he got there and he got the, t the bill for the textbooks and they didn't have that money they just had enough money for tuition so he had to delay his his entry into community college and and I think that give, gives the um, I think it makes Virginia's community colleges a, 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 uh, kind of a, gives it emotional foundations for him to kind of lead this effort and speak authentically about it. So what about Washington State? How's, um, you guys have been very successful with open educational resources. Is it similar or different? I think there's a lot of important similarities and probably some, some differences. The State Board for Community and Technical Colleges organizes and facilitates a lot of the governance activities of the community college system, but we we don't have a lot of authority over the colleges themselves. So our role tends to be in the areas of policy, uh, motivation, and storytelling about, about the system and why it exists and how colleges can help each other. One thing you said that resonates is the point about system tools. We also have a shared set of system tools which makes sharing enrollments, sharing resources, sharing technologies uh, very easy for the colleges to employ when they, when they want to undertake an OER initiative. It's pretty interesting what you said about uh, shared systems. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the, those type of systems that Washington ha uh, has that um, makes it friendly to OER or easier to support? Well, our strategic technology plan actually addressed OER as well as technology systems. The, I think the impetus of that plan was to create a system-wide culture of sharing, whether that we were sharing technologies or sharing resources. And we find that at the system level, we have a bigger voice with the vendors of technology systems, which allows us to speak coherently about our need to have those systems work openly and to promote our other initiatives in, in open educational resources and other access initiatives. What are some of the ways uh, the system office promotes open initiatives in the colleges? I think there's really mainly three ways, uh, or three areas of focus for that. Um, the first is our strategy has been to support the colleges as best we can and, and not coerce them. Uh, so providing grants, um, central grants that you know uh, colleges or individual faculty can apply for, um, uh, incentive pay for developing OER, um, some professional development that's delivered centrally, we, we have a role in that. Um, I think another really important uh, thing that we do or approach that we've had is with communication. Um, you know, as that's a, one thing that I think we do really well is have that kind of megaphone that we can kind of broadcast in a number of ways um, some of the initiatives and uh, areas of emphasis, areas of focus that that, um, that we kind of want colleges to hear. Um, so things like um, we have a, a number of just mailing lists, distribution lists. Um, uh, I use my blog that I kind of post information about, about grants and other things. And I think a third uh, and important thing is centralization, uh, both in uh, our governance structure and our infrastructure. Um, we have shared systems, our learning management system, student information information system. We also have a, a governance system that um, probably more than uh, a, a lot of other community college systems in states has a, a kind of an accountability structure between our chancellor and the, the college presidents that, um, that uh, 
that, that we can use. Uh, one good example of that is our, uh, uh, our presidents are evaluated every year by the chancellor, and one of the items that are now evaluated on uh, is on their uh, reduction of textbook costs each year annually. So, you know, that's on their mind about how they can reduce textbook costs for their students and as, a, as another kind of point that I think, uh, you know, Virginia has, uh, has used to, to make some of these changes. Yeah, that sounds uh, familiar to a lot of the things we do in the system as well. We provide a lot of professional development at the system level. We do trainings. We provide easy mechanisms for adopting courses. We try to work with local experts at the colleges to, to build the support systems for OER. We use uh, our projects to provide opportunities for partnerships for the colleges. We, when we have access to funding sources, we uh, provide incentives, incentive pay for faculty working in OER. We, I think this is successful for us because we have a policy and we refer to a strategic plan that was ratified by the presidents of the colleges. It's their plan, it's not the state board plan, it's the colleges of the state of Washington. And when we say our efforts reflect the values of that planning process, and those initiatives, I think it makes a lot more sense to people and it reinforces system coherence in ways that are useful for OER. One thing that's really helped is that we've developed a research program around OER use that allows us to discover what faculty needs are. That's not the entire purpose of the research, but it, it's an amazing byproduct for us. The faculty tell us what they want and we try to identify initiatives that meet those needs and we try to provide competitive funding opportunities that come with uh, open requirement. That cycle of initiatives, policy, and research, you can enter into that at any point. And Tell me a little bit more about uh, the policy in Washington. Well, state board policy specifies that materials created through competitive grants that are managed or facilitated by the state board must be openly licensed using a Creative Commons CC BY license. That allows us to attach that requirement to any funding that we uh, push out from the system level for almost any kind of open project. It, that doesn't mean only projects that are primarily about being or creating open educational resources. That's any instructional project that creates materials of any kind that has turned out to be a really powerful tool in a really small package. It's, it's, if you read the policy, it doesn't appear to be that onerous or that big a deal, but it turns out to be a very good lever for innovation and a very good way to uh, incent the colleges to participate in system-wide initiatives. Let me give you a good example of, of really kind of the uh, importance of that role of communication kind of centrally. Um, every year, um, our chancellor holds an annual retreat called the Chancellor's Annual Retreat, and that's where he pitches out his big ideas for the year, kind of a, kind of larger strategic vision. And uh, so, uh, maybe the first year I was at the BCCS in 2012, um, uh, OER was a was a topic that he wanted presented on this panel. So I put together a, a panel, included some kind of notable uh, OER advocates. And in the audience was uh, Dan Daniel DeMart uh, from Tidewater Community College. And uh, during this panel, um, it was uh, one of the uh, OER experts mentioned that no one had created a, a fully OER degree. And uh, Daniel DeMart uh, heard that and left that day committed to, to creating the first all OER degree, which became the Z degree. Um, you know, fast forward a couple of years, and now that Z degree model is something that we're using in Virginia to help uh, scale OER across our 23 community colleges. Richard, how would you characterize the differences between the initiatives you support from the system office now as opposed to the ones you supported three or four years ago? I think the difference is in kind of the level of scale. So, so three or four years ago, it was about kind of pilot projects around open educational resources um, that started with primarily textbook replacement. So, you know, incentivizing faculty to um, replace their, their current textbooks with OER. And, 
Um, and I think that is that has grown. Um, I think those have grown to us really wondering, well, how can we take the successes that we've had with our OER projects with Tidewater's Z degree and scale that um, at, a, at a statewide or system level so that we can have a larger impact on our, our students and um, on our uh, outcomes. Um, and I think part of that is, you know, part of the requirements of that scale is kind of institutionalization. How can it be become, how can these OER um, projects become part of what we do, kind of baked into um, the way we do things so that uh, it has a long-term long sustainability. Have you had a similar experience in, in Washington? I would say that we started with high-profile projects, then took a step back. And the result of that step back is to initiate a research pro program that goes to the faculty, asks them what their needs are, asks them what their interests are around OER, and then we respond as a system with smaller scale initiatives that support those interests and needs. So we aren't necessarily looking as a system to scale OER on the campuses. We're looking for the institutions to do that on their own. We're, we provide training courses that teach faculty how to use OER from the ground up. We've created um, Open Washington website, which is a, an OER network where people can, from the system can interact about their different projects and initiatives in OER. Um, I think we're doing smaller scale things that have significant effect, but we are in a period where we're, we're waiting and seeing what the next big initiative is. What are your plans for keeping the momentum around OER moving forward in Virginia over the next one to five years? Well, I think clearly, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited about the outcomes of our current project, which is the Z times 23 project, um, where we can show really significant adoptions of OER amongst our faculty, um, scaling across colleges, um, very positive uh, student outcomes, and, um, you know, a great return on investment to colleges. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I think is going to be really important is, is kind of what's bubbling up at the federal level with, uh, similar to the, the TACT grants, with, um, you know, federal dollars being contingent upon openly licensing, licensing uh, deliverables for grants. I think if there's uh, kind of uh, funding dollars at stake, it will um, help us uh, from kind of the from a policy level to really look at our successes with the OER, kind of build on it and um, codify it uh, for the near future at least. Yeah, that's a great point. I think our goals are similar. We're approaching it from the point of view of a need to expand our existing policy. We feel like OER is normal enough in our system now that enough faculty have heard about it and use it that what they're asking of us is that we expand the policy framework in the institutions to support their usage of it. From a, in the point of view of an individual faculty, that's great for them. They get better human resources policies. They get better promotion and tenure policies. We're developing language around uh, sharing of intellectual property ownership between uh, faculty and the colleges that they work at. So that benefits them directly, and I feel that that m makes them able to better concentrate on the pedagogy and the things that they that they can control. I think they often feel they can't control policy. From the system level, expanding the framework benefits us because it makes our system again, in a way I think is similar to what you were talking about, attractive to federal projects, attractive to funders. It creates a an infrastructure at the institutional level that allows our colleges to take advantage of these open initiatives that seem to be increasing in both number and scope.